So again, thank you all for joining uh, tonight's virtual workshop, Green Infrastructure 101. As I mentioned, I'm Ali Centric, the Communications and Outreach Manager for San Diego Coast Keeper. And again, thank you for being here and spending the next hour with us. We are really excited to present our first virtual event in a series of three workshops that we're hosting in partnership with Think Blue San Diego. So Lucera will talk a little bit about uh, some of the events that are coming up in uh, later this year and early next year. But I'm quickly going to go through some housekeeping before handing it off to Lucero. Perfect. Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, we are recording this virtual event. We ask that you please continue to keep your videos off and mics muted throughout the presentation to avoid any disturbances. Uh, this recording will be sent to all registered attendees and uploaded to YouTube in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, we do have a few polls and a brief survey, um, and we've included about four polls, poll questions throughout the presentation, just to help us get like a measure of understanding of the material and to make sure that you're all paying attention because you're gonna be tested on this later. Just kidding. Um, but there will be a brief survey that pops up in your browser once the meeting ends. So if you have any questions that do come up during the event or any comments, feel free to type those into the chat box just to keep us like moving, uh, moving along. Um, and you can find the chat in your Zoom toolbar. I will be monitoring the chat and we'll be making sure your questions are included during the Q&A portion at the end of the event. Um, so the Q&A, we do plan to have about 15 to 20 minutes of Q&A following the presentation. Uh, so we do have actually staff from the city stormwater department and think blue on the line to answer any specific questions. Um, so that's Alejandra and Vicky, they'll be here um, and they can answer any of the, the, the comments that come up related to their work. And Lucera, Lucera from our team will handle any topics related to Coast Keepers work. Um, and we do, one last final point, we do have uh, our contact information for both Coast Keeper and Think Blue uh, teams at the end of the slide deck um, on our thank you slide. So yeah, without further ado, I'll just hand it over to Lucero. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Allie. Um, again, my name is Lucero Sanchez. I am the Community Policy Coordinator with San Diego Coast Keeper. Um, we'll get into the workshop and just go over some objectives so that we understand kind of the goals of this presentation. We'd like to better understand the following concepts. We'd like to better understand who we are, uh, what stormwater is, why it leads to clean water and clean beaches, what green infrastructure is, and how we can help protect our communities and our environment. Again, just please add any questions to the chat as we go, and we'll make sure to answer all of those at the end. And thank you again for giving us a little bit of your time today on this Thursday evening. A little bit about Coast Keeper, um, getting into that objective one, who are we? San Diego Coast Keeper is a 501c3 that was founded as San Diego Bay Keeper in 1995. Um, it was originally formed to address chronic pollution in San Diego Bay. In short, San Diego Coast Keeper uses a combination of education, advocacy, hard science, hands-on restoration and targeted outreach and engagement to chip away at each major water quality and water supply issue that we take on. We believe a multi-pronged, multi-faceted approach is the most effective one. So our education programs, which we actually work with Think Blue on, um, were created to help Coast Keeper in creating sustainable generations um, and making sure that our generations are raised with awareness and understanding and passion for our local waters and watershed. Our advocacy team works with the city of San Diego as, as well as other local leaders and policymakers to make sure environmental concerns are addressed and considered in decision-making processes. And we believe that science is the backbone to any of that effective advocacy to move forward. So we actually had the largest volunteer water quality monitoring program in the state for quite a while. Um, so we are excited to be here. We're excited to be partnering with the city of San Diego. More about Think Blue. Think Blue San Diego, which is the city's stormwater department, 
works in all weather conditions to build, maintain, and modernize efficient stormwater infrastructure that lays the foundation for safe, sustainable, and thriving San Diego communities. It's incredibly important, the work that they do to make sure that we have clean water and clean beaches because it's truly made possible by clean stormwater. Staff is also here and they are welcome to chime in during the presentation as well as in the Q&A. So uh, feel free to ask questions towards staff as well. Um, so that's just a little bit about Think Blue and to highlight our connection um, together, we really do great things. Our project SWELL is our K through six water-based science curriculum, which is actually available and fully supported, fully free to teachers in San Diego Unified. That's a really exciting project that we're um, proud to partner with the city of San Diego on. And we also do a lot of community outreach events like this. Um, Ali mentioned that we do have three workshops. This will be the first of that. We're excited to be planning this presentation in Spanish as well. I speak Spanish, so we're excited to do that and make that really interactive, as well as having a different presentation that's more technical and project specific early next year. Um, so we know that outreach plays an important role in informing San Diegans about local water issues. And they may not know a lot about that, but they are deeply connected into, their, into that practice. Um, they know what that impact looks like in their communities, so we want to make sure that we're connecting with them, reaching out, and providing outreach opportunities like this where we can connect. So I will pass it over to Allie for our first poll. Allie, take it away. Awesome. So we're going to do our first of four polls. Uh, what is your familiarity with green infrastructure? And I'm going to leave this up for about 30, 30 seconds. There are no wrong answers also. So I'll be sharing um, the, the results to this poll um, following the, the 30, 45 seconds. Yeah, we have a pretty wide range of participants from what it looks like, but we're really excited to have this presentation kind of meet, meet those needs for different people. So please feel free to ask as many questions as you like, there's no wrong questions. Um, we wanna make sure that we're able to answer all of those. Awesome. So I'm gonna end the poll here um, and just share the results. So it looks like uh, most people are moderately familiar, uh, which is awesome at 30%, 37% of you all. And then we have kind of a, a wide smattering, just kind of even split along uh, the rest of the answers. So yeah, I'm hoping that We'll see a bit of a shift towards the, the end of the presentation when we when we do the, the post event assessment. So yeah, thank you, Sarah. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Allie. Um, we're really excited to just do the polls to keep y'all engaged. I know it's 6 p.m. on a Thursday. Luckily, we didn't do this on a Friday, um, but you're going to be able to ask us questions. So we want to make sure that we ask y'all questions as well. Um, going into, before we go into green infrastructure specifically, we want to lay the groundwork and talk about what stormwater is. Pretty simply put, it's uh, the water management name for any water that falls in abundance over urban areas as a result of rain or snow. So essentially it's rainwater. Um, when water flows out of our yards, down driveways, and out of parking lots into our storm drains, it makes its way through our environment untreated. Storm drains are not connected to our sewer system and they drain directly into our creeks, bays, lagoons, and ultimately into the ocean. I'll expand on that a little bit in um, later slides, but this means that we currently see stormwater as a liability because it does pick up a lot of pollutants on its way to the ocean. It's the leading contributor to pollution in San Diego. Um, so we want to make sure that we're starting to shift that focus because it truly can be an asset where we treat water all as one resource. We're currently in a drought, so we want to make sure that we address the negative impacts of stormwater and how we can try and solve those through green infrastructure. So that's where we're going with this. Um, to expand on that, in the past, we've designed our infrastructure around getting it out of our city and away from us as quickly as possible to avoid flooding, to 
um, help with public safety. But as we know now, there's no actual away. It all ends up in our oceans. Um, so it's something to consider. And these slides here are pretty helpful in just talking about um, defining impervious versus pervious surfaces. An impervious surface is a surface that does not allow fluids to pass. So if you think about just a field, generally if water hits that area, it's gonna be absorbed versus a concrete channel or a parking lot, that's all just gonna become urban runoff. So as we've had more urbanization, we've had more increased impervious surfaces. This is a great time for, for us to say, we are absolutely not against urbanization. We love the city of San Diego. We love our urban areas, but we do have to make sure that we talk about um, the impacts that that has that were inadvertent. It also increases what's called flow rates. So in the bottom right graph there, you can see post-development versus pre-development. Pre-development water would soak into the ground and it would go quite slowly. But as we've increased those impervious surfaces, it's become a lot faster, picking up a lot of pollution, creating a lot of erosion issues. Um, so that's something to consider there. Um, without those hard surfaces in the way, most of it would be soaking into the ground, which would lessen its flood potential, feed the environment, and recharge our groundwater. This slide just kind of sums that up. Stormwater in urban areas can lead to all of these issues. I think this is a great picture of you kind of seeing that happen where there's changes in the way our, our landscape looks because of increased flow rates. Um, it increases that stormwater volume. It also changes times of peak flows and just increases overall pollutants into our watersheds. So it can really have devastating effects to our ecosystem, which is why stormwater management is so important. Again, thank God for the <laughs> stormwater department and all of their work doing that. Um, I just mentioned watersheds. I would absolutely love to talk about watersheds for a little. Um, now that we have a little bit of a better understanding of what stormwater is, I wanna briefly go over this. A watershed is an area or a ridge of land that flows into the same body of water. So in the County of San Diego, we have 11 watersheds. The city of San Diego has six watersheds and watersheds aren't perfect. They don't follow city lines, which means we often share watersheds with other cities, counties, and our Tijuana watershed actually is across the border. So um, that's an important part about watershed management. We talk about uh, is everything that you see anywhere across the city of San Diego will end up in our Pacific Ocean if it's not picked up or if it's not treated. And here is an example of how variable that development and that urbanization can be in a specific watershed. Here we're looking at the Rose Creek watershed. Um, you can kind of see Mission Bay down in this area, La Jolla. Um, here you have a lot of trails, you have a military base, you have a lot of residential area. So it does vary within a watershed how we should be managing it. Our stormwater infrastructure, if we zoom in a little further into that, we see what the stormwater system looks like in that specific watershed. San Diego uses a system called the MS4. No one needs to remember that. We won't quiz you on it, but I did wanna add that in. It stands for Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. This means that anything our household, anything from our household wastewater, AKA anything we flush down the toilet or down the sinks goes to a sewage treatment plant and for good reason, since it could be harmful to our health. Um, but our stormwater is a completely different system that doesn't get treated and generally carries pollution into our ocean. This really just emphasizes the importance of upkeeping all of that infrastructure to ensure that there aren't any leaks or overflows into an untreated system since they do run side by side. Um, I thought this was a really cool picture of what that looks like, um, the blue being stormwater and the yellow being sewer. Focusing on our stormwater system, this is a system that the city of San Diego has. It's composed of many diverse and interconnected components. It's a $5.8 billion system. We really need to make sure that we upkeep it. 
Um, the stormwater department operates and maintains over 300 green infrastructure and stormwater treatment facilities, and it's been in construction and new development for other projects as well. It's truly crucial that as a community, we support all of the work that Think Blue does and show support when they need funding for this. Great graphic that they shared with us here. At the end of the day, San Diego has four core threats to water quality. We have pollution, which I've already mentioned a little bit, aging infrastructure, climate change, and lack of funding. So we're gonna go over that. This is a great picture. I, we were just talking about watersheds um, and it kind of shows those examples as well as an outline of San Diego. So you can kind of pinpoint which watershed you're in. Um, very cool to see. But going into that first, once it loads, once it, uh, so pollution, um, stormwater that encounters pollutants becomes polluted urban runoff. And we see this everywhere. You know, once you do a beach cleanup or you start just really picking up on those things, you'll see it everywhere. Um, we have a lot of plastics, a lot of cigarette butts, which is our number one pollutant, car fluids, toxic metals, pet waste. You see all of this that ends up on the floor and eventually gets picked up during storms, ends up in our oceans and makes it pretty unsafe for us to swim in our beautiful bays, creeks, oceans, bays. Um, so here are some pictures of Choyas Creek, actually. Most of these are from Choyas Creek. You see a lot of those pollutants that I talked about, but there are also a lot of unseen pollutants, a lot of chemicals, a lot of metals that end up either in our systems or in the systems of the fish around San Diego. Um, so I wanted to include these safety guides here for anyone who hasn't seen these. Um, while some of this is due to normal bioaccumulation pollution, pollution also contributes to this. Um, there are people who rely on subsistence fishing, which adds to that equity issue that's associated with pollution. Um, if anyone does fish in San Diego Bay, um, I would look this up just in case to make sure that you're being safe. Um, along with this one, a more popular one that most San Diegans know about is the 72 hour rule. A lot of people disregard it anyway, but what it is is a general guideline that discourages people from entering the ocean within three days of rainfall to avoid getting sick from that runoff pollution. While we work on reducing pollution, we highly encourage checking out uh, the County Beach Advisory or the San Diego Coast Keeper website, um, just making sure that you're staying safe, but hopefully green infrastructure and all of the things that we're talking about today can help reduce that as well. The picture on the left is from Mission Bay, which is already earmarked for a green infrastructure project. So that's really exciting. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a bit. And then the picture on the right is taken in November of 2020 after one of our first rains for the season. I mean, you can see all throughout the county, it was not safe based on bacteria or other pollution levels. Um, so just wanted to add that in here. We call all of these kinds of the catastrophe slides before we get into the solutions. Um, we don't want this, this presentation to just be kind of that downer mood, um, but we wanna make sure that we address the problems and we know what those problems are before moving into what those solutions and how green infrastructure can really help with this. Lucero, hi, this. I think Alejandra uh, wanted to add. The team, uh, thank you for that overview. Before you walk us to the, um, the green infrastructure and the solution, I did want to share that in addition to what you, can you hear me? Yes. You were cutting off a little bit, but I can. Okay. Yeah, apologize for that. Um, in addition to everything that we're, you were showing, when we have rainfall here in San Diego and really anywhere, and it picks up all the pollutants and the pictures that you showed, those that are joining us today about the impacts, um, picking up on what you were saying about polluted urban runoff, just wanted to highlight for everybody that. Water, uh, even if it doesn't rain in San Diego, 
every day we have urban runoff going into our streets and going into our water, water bodies that are picking up pollutants. So that can come from over irrigation, any water that's thrown on the streets and goes into our storm system. So this is something that even when it doesn't rain, we're seeing these impacts on a daily basis. So we just share that additional information as you walk us into the next slides, Lucero, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for adding that. And that's something that all of us as San Diegans can work to improve on. You men mentioned overwatering. That's something that on a personal level we can work on. Um, so definitely good thing to add there. Thank you very much. Um, going on to aging infrastructure. This is, you know, everything ages and these are just a couple of examples of what can happen. Um, it can lead to flooding, sinkholes, pipe bursts, leading to potential safety concerns. So we wanna make sure that our stormwater department has adequate funding to uh, make sure that some of these things aren't happening on an emergency basis. Adding to aging infrastructure, we also have flooding. Um, some more flooding pictures here. On the left and the middle, we have Whiteman Street in Choyas Creek region. Um, you can see how bad it gets when it rains sometimes, and that's just a result of infrastructure that's older or that needs um, some fixes, some more green infrastructure as well. And on the right, we have Mission Bay. That's a popular one that we all kind of know about, that it floods when it rains shouldn't be the case and we can probably work on that. Um, but wanted to add these pictures in here because as we get into the rainy season, we can expect some of that again. And these pictures here highlight uh, some known sites that the city has identified as in need of repair or having water quality impairments. These are really helpful just because you can kind of pinpoint where you live or places that you know and recognize that there are issues throughout the city that you, you're a member of that community and you can get involved and reach out to the city, see if you, there's anything that you can do to help or support, um, as well as just making sure that we know that all of these things are happening. The city of San Diego definitely knows and requires some funding and some support there. So I'm really happy to have these to share there. And then moving on, we can't forget about climate change. Um, San Diego imports over 80% of our water supply from the Colorado River and the Sierra Nevada. Both of these regions, if you look at this map here that was taken um, during the summer, are both in higher tiers of drought than we are. So we really need to make sure that we're finding ways to be more water efficient and ways to increase our own local supply. Green infrastructure, while not always increases that supply, does substantially increase how efficiently we use our water and potentially helps us with that local supply issue. Um, so I wanted to add this, as well as California uses 19% of its electricity for water transport and use. So if we're not spending as much electricity with water transport, that would be a way to also contribute to fighting the climate crisis. So all wins on all fronts. And on the flip side, we can also expect heavier, more erratic rainy seasons, um, as well as sea levels rising. All of these issues just highlight the problem and green infrastructure could be the solution. We'll talk about what green infrastructure means and more examples of that. Um, but these are some of the pictures of showing San Diego already sees these issues. Um, that's why we're here. That's why we're interested in green infrastructure. So before we get into that, we are shifting into poll number two. Thanks, Lucero. So poll number two, I'm going to bring up right now. Oops, because I was sharing that. Um, we are going to get into, to test if you're paying attention, which four core issues threaten San Diego's water quality. Um, you'll have about 20 to 30 seconds to answer the question here, and then I'll share the results. I intentionally made this a little trickier, so hopefully y'all are paying attention. <laughs> um, and just a quick reminder for folks, thanks for um, chiming in into the chat and adding your questions there. Feel free to add any comments or, or questions that you see come up throughout the presentation there, and I'll add it to our queue. 
Great, thank you, Ali. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. So it actually looks like everyone got the right answer. So our job here is done, right? <laughs> you just pick up the slide and go. <laughs> Cool. Awesome. Thanks Thank for everyone who's participating. It's really nice to, to get to have some kind of interaction. I know, you know, during COVID times, we aren't able to do this in person, but it also means that we get to connect with a lot more people that don't have to drive anywhere and can probably eat lunch, dinner while we're doing this. Um, so thank you for your time. Um, now we're going to shift on to a little bit more positive. I've down put us down a little bit now. Um, so just fo shifting focus to more of those solutions and thinking about how do we fix all of these issues, these issues that really threaten San Diego. Um, we invest in cl a climate resilient San Diego. We invest in green infrastructure. These are multi-benefit solutions that would address water quality, public health, flooding, and disproportionate impacts. We talk about equity a lot and making sure that people that are going to see those disproportionate impacts through climate change are um, getting all of these projects as well, increasing access to our oceans, increasing access to green space, um, and increasing access to green jobs as well. So now that you've heard me say green infrastructure a ton, we can talk about um, what it actually means. Green infrastructure is an approach to water management that protects, restores, and mimics our natural water cycle. So that's in comparison to gray infrastructure, which would consist of projects that use concrete, steel. It's a lot of what we think about when we think about infrastructure. Um, some examples in the water space would be dams, seawalls, concrete channels. So we wanna shift into more of this green approach that's gonna improve San Diego's water quality, biodiversity, climate resilience, quality of life, and also sense of community. I don't know about you, but I see all of these pictures and I'd love to see this throughout my community. Um, it provides a lot of benefits and the city of San Diego's stormwater department really invests in green infrastructure as an effective multi-benefit solution to protect us from all of these things. Um, so moving forward, we have a couple more slides on what that definition looks like. These are really great pictures of um, that mimicking the natural hydrologic cycle and what the vision of Think Blue and San Diego Coast Keepers also. Um, here are some examples from a previous report that they had set out, um, just having cleaner water, less flooding, uh, you can see a rain barrel on the side of that house, and then more of that getting back to restoring our natural ecosystems. Um, that also increases flood management, restoring wetlands, um, very big part of this as well. So I really loved these pictures here. And then a little bit more definition. Um, the use of green infrastructure really functions as a sponge to filter out pollution. It can be constructed along our streets, in our parks, throughout our communities, um, and permeable surfaces such as brick pavers, rain barrels, um, vegetated bioswales, climate smart landscaping. These are all examples of what green infrastructure can look like. Um, here are some pictures from an event that we actually did um, not this weekend, but last weekend, um, where we did a ride the tide, which was we biked around and saw different examples of green infrastructure in homes. So we took some pictures of these rain barrels, um, more of that native landscaping to just minimize and disconnect from impervious surfaces and move into a more beautiful San Diego. The more uh, pictures here, here's an example of the rain barrels. If you see that top right picture, um, all of that lawn, which we don't love lawns, but it actually covers the picture on the left. It is all capturing water that's um, going up and gravity feeding all of the beautiful trees and plants and landscaping that that home had. So very cool examples here. Some more examples to visualize what the goal of green infrastructure is. 
Um, it's flow control. We talked about avoiding um, erosion, avoiding picking up all that pollution, uh, detention, retention to that sometimes get confused and filtration. Nature is a great way to filter through things as well. Um, so great little example of what that looks like here. Um, moving on to our third poll. Let's come up quick. Yeah, awesome. thank you, Lucero. Um, so this poll is just testing what is green infrastructure. So leave it up here for about 30 seconds. Awesome. Thank you all for participating. I'm going to end the poll and just quickly share the results. So it looked like most of us got the right answer. So that third one is a little tricky. I worded these tricky kind of intentionally. So it is a, an approach to water management that protects, restores, or mimics the natural water cycle. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Allie. Um, moving on along. Uh, the stormwater, just to go back to what all the stormwater department does, um, their green infrastructure program has completed the construction of 19 green infrastructure projects throughout the city. You see those um, red triangles there, as well as 24 capital green infrastructure projects in various stages of design and construction. A really great part of this presentation has been just learning about all of the projects and making sure that we highlight them. So we're gonna go over all of those in a bit. Um, the stormwater department has also been successful in being awarded very low interest financing for clean water. Um, and I'll talk about some of the projects and highlight those in a bit, but there's still a lot of need for funding. So please make sure as a community that we support it, we ask for that. Um, First project up on our highlights. It's taking a second to load. Okay, the Choyas, ah, there we go. Awesome, so the Choyas Parkway Stream Restoration. We were actually able to go and see a lot of site visits for this. There is Lucero for scale. Um, we're gonna be going over these current or completed projects as, exam as an example of what green infrastructure can or will look like in San Diego. This project is currently in the concept design phase. It's a stream restoration project that proposes the restoration of the Choice Creek from Culver Outlet at 54th up through Euclid Avenue. Um, so this picture on the right is actually from a different completed project in similar area. So that's kind of like the probable before and after. You can see that gray infrastructure in the background on the top left picture. You can also kind of see some concrete on the sides. So we want to make sure that that's all out. Um, very exciting project. Super happy to see this moving forward. And then this project, actually I want to highlight that this is one that is moving forward because of some grant money that um, the Think Blue team has been able to acquire. Um, it's finished its design phase and is now moving on to the next phase thanks to that funding. Um, it's an integrated project with the Public Utilities Department that's conducting sewer and water replacement, as well as a lot of um, proposed biofiltration, bioretention basins, low flow diversion systems. Um, you can see some shoreline restoration, the picture on the top right, which we've talked about earlier, that's um, that pink area on the design map. So you'll see that being restored. And the bottom right is a storm drain outlet, um, which will also be replaced. So a great project as well. I highly encourage anyone that lives near these areas to check these projects out and see firsthand what they look like. Um, Kellogg Park, is a project that was completed. It really uh, was designed as a treatment control utilizing best management practices in the parking lot of Kellogg Park um, to treat stormwater and urban runoff. 
Uh, the project in this include elements that are going to capture surface runoff from the parking lot and public right of way, and the elements will filter and infiltrate the water to minimize pollutants. So you see some trash enclosures on that picture on the right. Um, also just improved drainage, new landscaping. We love native plants. Um, this project and also in addition added a vegetated bioswale. Um, so this is a good project to check out as well. You don't think about it when you go to the beach, but you're in an area that has green infrastructure that was very thoughtfully created to protect our ocean and our beach in that area. Um, so moving on to another project here, which actually looks very beautiful. Um, Ashley Falls was actually just finished. So these are pretty fresh pictures. Um, but this project was implemented to improve water quality in um, stormwater runoff for the area, which discharges into Carmel Valley Creek, Los Penasquitos Creek, Los Penasquitos Lagoon, and into the ocean. So this basin was designed as a best management practice to infiltrate, filter, and treat runoff in Carmel Valley area. Um, so you can see some pictures okay. here of that concept plan. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to highlight also in this particular Ashley Falls project and also the one that you um, shared in your pre one of your previous slides for Troyes Creek is um, I'd like everybody to see not just the green infrastructure and all the benefits that Lucero is highlighting, but if you see the trails that are around um, the green infrastructure and also in the other project, that's something that us as Think Blue and the department are really focusing on that we want as many as our stormwater infrastructure projects and specifically green infrastructure, when we're able to integrate the multi benefits and add community enhancements, such as these trail areas and walkable areas for enjoyments, uh, we want to make sure that we do that. And we're also partnering with our other departments for other enhancements that we may be. Able to. So this is combined with what our partners co keeper shared at the beginning that we really want those multi integrated approach to our stormwater management. So anyways, just wanted to make sure that you enjoy the, the walkways and the are added in the projects. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It it makes it really accessible to be able to see these projects up close and get some ideas um, of things that you can implement on a sc smaller scale or why you should be showing up and supporting these larger scale projects. Um, in addition, there's also a lot of interpretive signing signs in the area to show either before and after pictures or what the design looks like. Sometimes there are things that you can't see because it's underground and there's a lot of planning that goes into that. Um, this one specifically, you can see a lot of the green infrastructure, which is great, um, but some of them you'll go there and you're like, I, I don't really know what's around, but we do have those signs to um, include community awareness and engagement as well. So just to wrap up um, benefits of green infrastructure, I know we added a lot and we can go into like super details, which is why I will again remind everyone that we will have a more technical presentation um, with some project experts um, to talk about the mechanisms of specific projects, and we'll just focus on a few. Um, but benefits of green infrastructure, really improving that water quality through so many ways, through capture, through treatment, through all of these solutions. Um, creating flood safe communities. Again, our infrastructure, our stormwater infrastructure is meant to help us with flooding um, and along our coastline, creating those um, marsh, marshes, wetlands and restoring those is also going to help with um, sea level rise and with other flood issues like king tide season, things like that. Um, and restoring and revitalizing our natural spaces. It's time for us to be able to see all of this and have green access. We didn't have it in this presentation, but there's a great map that I highly encourage you all to look up. Um, it's green access in San Diego, and there's different regions that don't have a lot of that green access per um, the density of population in that area. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, reuse of stormwater. We are huge proponents of stormwater capture, making sure that that's something that is a part of our system to increase our local supply, to increase our drought security. 
um, strengthening our city and bringing our community together. All of these projects, as Alejandra mentioned earlier, are community enhancements. It's to learn and to have a sense of stewardship for all of this. Um, so we're really excited to see more of these projects move forward, more of these things be funded. Um, so with that, I will go into poll number four. Take it away, Ali. Yeah, I'll just go really quickly here, probably leave this up for 20, 25 seconds, because uh, I do want to jump into the Q&A shortly after. So we're just testing how well uh, we did on this presentation and, and just kind of gauging um, your all understanding of the information that we presented. So thank you very much. Um, and again, thank you for, for popping those questions into the chat or sending me a direct message. I've got uh, quite a few questions here. So really appreciate you all staying engaged. Perfect. I'm going to end this poll. It actually looks like we had a considerable shift towards moderately familiar, very familiar, and extremely familiar. So I just want to reiterate uh, to like thank you all for your time. Um, and then now uh, we'll throw it back over to Lucero to go over um, the, the last slides and then the Q&A portion. Awesome. Thank you very much. It's very exciting to see, at least in this short time, just talking a little bit more about green infrastructure and hopefully getting people excited for this. Hopefully the people that are moderately familiar went to extremely familiar and did not not pay attention. <laughs> um, moving into the next slide here. How can you help? How can you do these projects? We talked a lot about large scale city run projects, but there are things that you can do um, yourself as a homeowner. Um, you can help by having rain barrels and using that water for your own landscaping, for your own gardens, um, having more native landscaping. We have a lot of lawns and quite frankly, I think native landscaping is much more beautiful and so much more water efficient. Um, we can install gray water systems in our homes um, that would entail using laundry water for our landscape, or we like the term showers to flowers. Um, and just making sure that you access resources. The city has a lot of rebates and a lot of different information as to how to get involved. Um, I know the city mentioned that they would like to add some resources to the chat. Um, so check that out. Check out the thinkblue.org website, .com website um, also, which we'll have in the final thank you slide with all of our contact information. And just remain engaged as well for these larger projects. It's really important that community shows up and says, hey, these are the projects that we want. We want green infrastructure. We want these things to be funded. So just remaining again engaged, remaining connected to Think Blue, to their newsletter, to our newsletter when we have stuff that we're able to support with. Um, it's small things like that that can really move our city forward. So with that, I will shift over to q and A. I will stop sharing my screen for a little bit and then we'll add the screen back up for our contact info. Awesome, thank you, Lucero. So I do have a list of the questions that folks have been adding to the chat. So I'm just gonna go chronologically because that's easiest. So Arne Johansson asks, is there any action on correcting the down cutting happening in many drainages into which stormwater is dumped. So I'm assuming that they're talking about erosion. Um, so yeah, I actually will throw that over maybe to the city, to, to Vicky or Alejandra to see um, if you have any answers to that question. Um, yeah, so one of the things that we do in the stormwater department is um, address erosion control because that's also something that brings pollutants and it changes the natural landscape and can also increase some of the flooding impacts. So uh, one of our projects actually for the Lost Penn Lagoon is to address um, sediment issues. Um, and as far as maintenance is concerned, a lot of the sediment and vegetate, the sediment that, um, that is accumulated in a lot of our channels that are our flood management infrastructure, the city every year goes through uh, a prioritization process and there's also a community survey to see what the community uh, is prioritizing as well. And we have a maintenance schedule to deal with that um, and then also with the vegetation. But um, absolutely, that's one of the key things 
that we address and um, sediment management and the pollutants in the sediment is something that as a matter of fact, uh, we're regulated to clean up and address in some um, highly polluted areas. Thank you, Alejandra. Um, okay, next question is from Tony De Garate. Sorry if I'm messing up the pronunciation. So, um, oh, I think I answered this in, answered this in the chat. Uh, he asked about the various watersheds on one of our previous slides. Um, so actually all of the watersheds drain into the Pacific Ocean. That's the common water body. They all kind of get their different ways, uh, but I don't know, Lucera, if you have anything else to add to that, but I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah, all of the watersheds in um, San Diego County, so also the city of San Diego, all drain into the ocean. They take some pit stops, but eventually all make their way down to our oceans. Um, if anyone's interested in what watersheds they're in, we do have resources on that um, on our website, as well as there's other websites that you can look into and kind of follow um, the way things would make their way down. Yeah, and I just wanted to reiterate, if um, we don't get to your question during this time, we do have your contact information um, because you registered for, for this workshop. So we, we are able to follow up with you one-on-one -on -one if you also wanted to send us an email um, if you didn't get your, your question answered here. And just wanted to add that uh, in regards to the watersheds and the water body, obviously it's the Pacific Ocean, um, as Coast Keeper mentioned, Go to their website they have a great watershed tool also project clean water and our thinkblue.org because there you can also get a really quick snapshot of the watersheds but some of the other water bodies like the san diego river you know there's some streams in the canyons and lakes so every all of that it touches a watershed so if there's a water body small or large within your community or that you go recreate be it fishing or that you go jogging around um, all of that touches and then all the storm water that goes into the drains that's untreated ends up in the Pacific Ocean. Hope that adds a little bit more context. Thanks. Yeah, that's yes, helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next question I have um, is from Tiffany Boyd Hodgson. Um, in regards, she was curious about the watersheds in the San Marcos area, because I think that's where she's from. So I, I did share that link um, earlier to uh, the webpage that Alejandra mentioned, where you can find which watershed you're in. Um, and then I think she was curious if there are any underground aquifers, or I think this question was around, was around water supply as well. Is that something, um, Alejandra or Vicky, you all are familiar with? I'm not familiar with San Marcos watershed. Um, we do have an aquifer under sort of Mission Valley area that I'm aware of, but I'm not sure about San Marcos. Do you know, Alejandra? No, I don't know about San Marcos. And in regards to, uh, you know, city of San Diego, I would encourage you to go to the uh, city's website under public utilities. And I believe they also have that as a a resource. So they have a really great pulse on the type of groundwater that we have available, um, you know, aquifers. Unfortunately, in San Diego, we're very different than in other regions of even Southern California and throughout the state. We don't have the large aquifers and the groundwater storage capabilities that um, that we see in other parts of the state, but we do have some and um, through public utilities and also sometimes in partnership with our stormwater department, all of those have been thoroughly analyzed. So we have a very good understanding of uh, what resources and capabilities or limitations we may have as a city so we can maximize those assets. Awesome, yeah. thank you. Um, and I did take a quick look. San Marcos is a part of the Carlsbad watershed. Um, so it shares it with Carlsbad, Encinitas, Vista, and a bit of Escondido. Don't know about the aquifers, but I can find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for all that context. Super helpful. Um, okay, so Mary Beth Russo asks, do repairs or modernizations of the system come under the infrastructure federal bill being discussed now in Congress? So maybe the city can help with that. Yeah, so for any, um, I'm gonna just kind of go back and forth. Any potential state and federal funding, um, our team works hand in hand with uh, 
the mayor's office, government affairs center lobbyists to really be aware of, tap into, and when able, influence any funding so that we don't miss out on that. Um, I know that the federal infrastructure bill is still being kind of negotiated and run through, but so I do, we don't know yet exactly what's going to be there, but we do anticipate that as part of that broader infrastructure package, there will be um, opportunities for the city. And this is where also we're being very smart and creative with the multi-benefits of stormwater. So when we look at funding opportunities, let's say for the infrastructure bill that's being discussed, we're not just looking at, oh, what's specific to stormwater or flood management, because we do see a lot of these co-benefits. We see what is in that package for resiliency or sustainability, you know, and green spaces and not just from a uh, pipe repair. So that way we can be smarter about how we access that money and if needed, package something up with other city departments for a broader benefit. So um, I know there's going to be something and that's something that uh, in partnership, like I said, with government affairs, they're absolutely staying on top of that. So that way we can prepare and when something does pass, we know the timing of it and when we can be able to both influence and access those things or if it's going to be competitive, at least uh, put our best foot forward. Thank you. Thanks, Alejandra. That's that's very helpful. Um, yeah, it cannot, I, I feel like it can often be kind of uh, cloudy how like the, the federal funding gets to the local level. So I appreciate that context. Um, Okay, so Lance Dyer asks, what's the intent with the Ashley Falls project to capture and retain stormwater? I don't think he saw any obvious outflows. So maybe you all can talk a little bit about that. Um, that may be one of the projects that we go into early next year as well. Um, so just seeing if you have any information off the top of your head. Yeah, um, the Ashley Falls project is meant to treat pollution so it does have an uh, sort of out, I wouldn't say an outfall, but it does have a pipe at the bottom that you couldn't really see from those photos that it does flow into the storm drain system and eventually out into the Los Ped Lagoon and the ocean from there. Yeah, and then here I added again in case we wanted to get those slides yeah. back up and point out mm -hmm. any areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of, so kind of by where the D is. <laughs> <laughs> where the pipe that where it goes mm -hmm. yeah it goes underground there so th this one yeah it definitely catches water and helps with some type of you know flood management uh, minor that comes into this area again from multiple uh one watershed but just multiple creeks and parts of the community um and i don't have the details i can get them but it's able to retain a certain amount of water. And then it, as it percolates down, uh, it actually is uh, filtered and that's how we get the benefit of water quality. So in this particular one, um, it's really meant to address some of the key pollutants in the area, um, metals, bacteria, um, some viruses. And we added another layer that it actually captures trash as well. So once we have these types of projects, um, just for awareness, the, the establishment phase for the vegetation, once all of the infrastructure is in place, it's about a two year process for all of the vege vegetation to fully grow. And then we need to maintain it in perpetuity, meaning that it gets checked to make sure that it's working as it's meant to be, uh, the trash captures and, you know, everything is clean so that when we do get the next storm drain, storm rain, um, you know, it's not plugged up and it can be work as needed. So I hope that um, answers your question. So it does address with some of the, you know, the water and the flooding, but the main intent of this was for uh, addressing water quality issues and those key pollutants that are pollutants of concern. Um, and that we are actually uh, mandated from a regulatory standpoint to address. So this is one project that is the piece of the puzzle towards addressing our, broad our broader water quality needs. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for bringing that up, Lucero, too. Yeah, um, thank you for the added info. Yeah, super helpful. Um, I do want to remind folks that if we don't get to your question, we're happy to follow up offline and via email. Um, all our 
I think I added all of our contact info to the chat um, and we'll have that as our last slide as well. So the next question is from Mary, Bo Mary Beth Russo. Um, are there any projects I'm assuming that are reusing stormwater now? If so, how? I'm not. Do you, you want to chat a little bit about um, well, rain barrels? That is one okay. um, yeah. smaller scale uh, community where everybody can uh, participate, capture, and and reuse. So I'll just highlight it briefly, and then maybe uh, Vicky, you could chat a little bit about our rebate sure. program. So um, there are. Um, as far as stormwater capture and reuse, there was actually, there's been a countywide regional study that there are, we've identified really eight different potential uses, opportunities to capture and reuse. So at one scale is the rain barrels that I think any and all of us can use to, I mean, you can use that water for so many different purposes. Um, I also know that some uh, businesses uh, or larger developments um, also have some, you know, in-house storage. I know the um, the airport, for example, also has a, a big basin that they build to capture some of that stormwater and they're able to reuse it uh, to actually flush toilets, take care of their landscaping. I think they're able to capture more water than they're actually able to reuse, but at least if it's not, it's treated and then it's released in a much better quality. Um, I do want to say, though, that this is an area that is really important to us as a city, especially the partnership that our stormwater department has with our public utilities um, department, because we all understand, and I hope that after today's discussion, all of you leave with understanding that stormwater is not just a problem that oh, we have to deal with it because of flooding and it's full of pollutants, but if managed properly, it's actually a tremendous resource for our community and throughout the state. So we're looking with storm with PUD to really explore from a, a technical perspective, engineering perspective, financial perspective, what's the world of possibility for us, especially because um, can we have that urban drool or uh, dry weather flow uh, in some areas divert into the sewer system and then be treated, right, is there capacity? And then we're also exploring to see, is there an opportunity to perhaps capture some of that at a larger scale and then have it go into our sewer system that is going to go into our pure water system. You know, as you know, with pure water, we're going to producing, locally produce more than 50% of our our water needs. So we, we're looking at ways of maximizing existing infrastructure um, and what's possible in a way that is not going to compromise, you know, the integrity of pure water and so forth. So uh, even though none of those things are online, I just wanted to tell everybody in the call that that's something that we've been working on collectively now for about three years um, and we're making some good progress and we'll have some additional insight and information at the end of this fiscal year so we know where what we can do and where we can invest those resources. And again, our lens is when we do advance something that's a stormwater harvesting project, um, is it going to help us address our, some of our flooding needs, our water quality needs, you know, from all the pollutants, and will it be able to add to our water supply uh, for the benefit of all of us? So I hope that. Um, answers your question and we're more than happy to keep you updated on the progress. Yeah, thank you so very much. I'm going to add the thank you slide up for anyone who I know we're two minutes over here and some people were hopping off, but um, we do have all of our contact information here. If you have any further questions, if you want to reach out uh, via email, follow us on social media, check out our websites. We have a lot of great information resources. And I did see a comment in the chat about potentially just sharing the questions that were, weren't were addressed and some answers, answers and resources with all of the attendees that were here in case it was a question that you saw and didn't ask, but you still wanted to know the answer to. Um, I think on our end, we would be happy to do that and send that email afterwards. Yeah, 
Definitely. Um, yeah, for, for um, Ari, Lance, Arn, Mary Beth, Elizabeth, Harry, Pamela, they all had questions that we weren't able to get to in this hour long presentation, but we will be following up um, with you directly. We'll also get these questions over to the city so that they can um, also add their uh their answers as well um, and again we will be sharing the presentation early next week and the recording um, in the next couple of weeks so look out for that in your email and on youtube um yeah thank you for joining us today <laughs> i know we're a few minutes over but this was such a stimulating conversation and discussion and we really appreciate everyone's engagement um, and participation so yeah i just wanted to see if um, anyone from the city or lucera had any closing thoughts I just want to say thank you for everyone that showed up to this and hopefully are watching via recording as well. Um, we're really happy to have these kinds of discussions. And again, just a reminder, we are going to have this in Spanish as well. So if you know anyone that would benefit from that, would like to participate in that, or if you'd like to participate in that, we'd be happy to have you. We'll also have a second green infrastructure presentation that's different from this one. So stay tuned for any of that information as attendees of this one, we'll probably also share that with you as we have those dates and Eventbrite signups. So we really appreciate it um, that you took some time out of your day today and we hope to chat with you and connect with you further. Yeah, I just would echo what Lucero said. Thank you all so much for coming. We really appreciate it. You did a great job on the presentation as well, Lucero. Thank you so much. We really appreciate our partnership with Coastkeeper and we'll, um, Work with you guys to help answer any of those questions that other people have or please reach out if you have any other questions that you didn't don't think of now but maybe you think of later we'll be happy to to answer those and i did put the link for the rain barrel rebates in the chat if you guys are interested in checking that out yeah i'll be sure to include that in the email out to folks too yeah so on behalf of i uh, think with san diego city of san diego stormwater department and thank you all for joining us uh we're here to really make our communities better enhance our quality of life, um, keep our, our clean water, clean beaches for everybody's benefit. And thank you Coastkeeper for the tremendous partnership that you have with us and with the community. So we appreciate everybody's engagement today and hopefully we'll see more of each other moving forward. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.